hopefully can't charge him down. And then Pella gets a flick on, looking for Mane off him. And uh, referee stopping play here because Forster was caught by Sam Vokes. Thirteenth minute here, Forster still down, the England keeper. Thirteen clean sheets this season. Just needed two to equal last year's record, Forster. And you can hear the applause he's going to get from right round this stadium now. The first minutes of the season he is missing. The news is that uh, there is something uh, on his knee. And he's now taking a, a scan and we have to wait about uh, the news about that. But it's not looking uh, very good. Yeah, I think the week before got man of the match against Chelsea and then you know within a week it's kind of changed and um, you just got it I think it's you know they're not knowing I think I, I respect Fraser a hell of a lot he's a, he's a good guy um, and he's a great professional and um, obviously I hope that um, he's has a, he has a speedy recovery and I hope that the injury is not too serious um, and that he's back um, you know putting the Saints shirt on very soon yeah, obviously I knew what I'd done but then you're worried about other damage to the knee um, and just the kind of waiting really, you're not sure what's what's going to happen kind of moving forward and Yeah, like I didn't I don't think. I slept that night, I slept for about 20 minutes, I think. Um... So then you think about how hard he worked over the last 10 months, and, um, and then just to kind of get back and do the thing you love again. Uh, just remember getting a back pass from Bertie, had a touch across my body, and then. Uh, yeah, no, just as I kicked it, like my foot slipped a little bit and yeah. It wasn't particularly painful when I did it, it was just I knew I'd done done something, you know, I felt my kind of kneecap move um a bit and then yeah, I don't know, just one of them where I remember kind of obviously uh Steve coming on, the physio and the duck there and I think uh, knowing Fraser as I did, um, you know it's it's something quite significant and I wouldn't expect him to stay down, I wouldn't have expect, expected the hand signals. So I'm thinking straight away it's something pretty serious. What I, I didn't really have a clue. Um, at that short period of time you're actually thinking it's, it's bad. But we've got to obviously get Kelvin prepared to go on the field and we're trying to win a football match. So it's short term thinking at the moment. And then obviously uh, during the half time I went to see Fraser went to speak to the staff and got more information and then you're obviously slowly uh, coming round to the fact that it's a, a very, very serious injury. He seemed to fall awkwardly and I was worried about his shoulder, but as soon as I run on, it's, it's his knee that he's feeling. And uh, it was pretty obvious it was a significant injury as soon as we got there. The anatomy and the knee looked different and we just had to get him off as quickly as possible and control his pain, really. And then uh, just put on the stretcher and obviously take him back inside. And then we waited for the half time to be over and the lads to be back outside. And then, yeah, obviously, got put in the ambulance and taken for a scan. Um, and that kind of straight away showed the kind of damage that I'd done. And then, uh, yeah, so we kind of knew pretty, pretty soon. And, yeah, I just had my leg put in a brace and um, was straight on crutches. Obviously, between the injury and half time, I didn't really know what had happened or what was happening. The, the, the staff were obviously getting him inside and assessing him. Um, and then, as I said, at half time, you, you're given an early prognosis. Obviously, you know, the guys go for scans and, and various other um, soft tissue uh, vision uh, things. But in terms of what, what was told to me at half time, you knew it was significant. You, I, you knew from the way he went down that, that it was something. In, uh, you know, serious. You know, he wasn't, he's not one to go down with. You know, he's played through through stuff previously, um, so he, you, you knew that it was a significant injury there, and it's always difficult. You don't know exactly the the, the length of time he's going to be out, but um, I think yeah, it was. It's, you just know that it, it would have affected him so much because he, he's so he just has so much drive and purpose and determination about the way he goes about his business that he would. He would come back from it. 
Well, it's, a, it's an injury that we're all aware of can happen. We know the test, it's documented in all the textbooks. But even people who've been in the game a long time have not seen one. You know, um, the more background research that we did, we found uh, a couple of goalkeepers that had had it previously. Uh, but to our knowledge, not a Premier League player that you know, got back to successfully playing. So it's obviously uh, a big injury for us to manage. And the first step in, the, in that process is getting the right surgeon to do a good job. You, you obviously just got it, I think. Um, and then you're just kind of praying there's no other kind of damage within the knee uh, and there wasn't so I had the scan and you know there was no more damage so it was that was kind of good news to be honest and then you yeah, obviously saw the surgeon on the Monday and then I uh, got penciled in for the surgery kind of on the Wednesday so it's just getting to the Wednesday really once once you get there then you've had the surgery and you're healing after that so I think it's just those first few days where you're waiting to have the surgery. Um, they're probably probably the hardest, but uh, you know, I was lucky to kind of have my family around me, um, so you know, they kind of helped me through what was you know obviously a tough time. I guess like a lot of footballers who are in the long-term injury situation, you start asking questions about when, how long, things like that. Yeah, I think that I was trying to ask that kind of when I was in the duck's room you know, literally straight off the pitch when they said what they thought it was. Um, you know, I was immediately just trying to say, well, how long? Um, and it's impossible to know really until you've seen the surgeon and uh, understand what, what the surgery involves. So, um, you know, I saw him on the Monday and, you know, I was fortunate to, you know, see kind of the best knee specialist in the UK, I think, really. So, um, you know, I was, I was very fortunate and he's, you know, a fantastic surgeon. Um, I think with an injury like this, that the first things on his mind are, am I ever going to play again? So initially, uh, we tried to reassure him as much as we could uh, and try and break up what is essentially a long process into a series of stages along the way with goals at the end of every stage. So I think if you look at it uh, as, as a one-year rehab, it's just too long to get your head around. Uh, you know, so we tried to break it up into a series of stages. We had eight in all. and. The fans have seen him back on the pitch this week, but we've really and truly just started another stage that is trying to consolidate regular league football. Tell me about those early days then with Fraser in terms of the immediate recovery. To be honest with you, a lot of it was getting him outside in the sunshine and getting some vitamin D around the area to help with the scar because it was such a, a huge scar. I wanted to keep from that and it was basic range of motion. Um, I came up with a few funky exercises to just get the quads working but to maintain a little bit of excitement because it can be boring just doing the basic knee extensions that everybody knows around which you know weren't really applicable to that injury you could do them till the sun goes down really for ACL reconstructions but for a patella tendon again it had a different effect on the extensor mechanism of the knee. Um, it was it was the toughest part I think that's when you got a lot of time to think and obviously you're constantly just thinking about the injury and um, then you constantly just thinking about wanting to get fit but there's not actually anything you can do so it was just you know once I started coming back in here um, you know it was, it was good in a way because you're obviously around the lads and it would break your day up a bit um, but it was you know it was kind of boring times really. Um, well initially in, in the first six weeks uh, Fraser's in a brace uh, and he can barely move his knee uh, for the first four weeks he couldn't move it it was braced in a rigid straight position then we turned the brace a little bit he's allowed sort of 30 degrees of motion um, and he had to spend uh, four or five hours a day on a machine that bent his knee for him, a continuous passive motion machine to ensure that it didn't get stiff. But really and truly, even at four to six weeks, it wasn't strong enough for him to put any weight through that so he was still on crutches and we couldn't do any active exercise with him at all. So first priority is getting the skin to heal over the wound site and try and reduce the inflammation. And then stage two is all about typical activities of daily living, things that we take for granted, getting to walk again getting to do stairs normally with a left foot and then a right foot in a reciprocal pattern. And that took another six to eight weeks. Yeah, but that was very much our goal for stage two and so on and so forth. And then before you know it, we're into stage four where we've got to take what's essentially a chicken leg by then. There's not a lot of meat on the bone, put some load through it and try and get it really strong uh, and as big as the other side. From that, we can start to think about more sport specific tasks. Um, so along the way, um, we used uh, a lot of different tricks to, to monitor the process. A fair bit of technology, uh, including an ultra-gravity treadmill, it was invented by NASA. Um, before he could walk properly and he was still on crutches, we got him doing a reciprocal running pattern at a very small percentage of his body weight, um, just to remind his body that ultimately, in the end, he is going to have to do these activities.
there's a tremendous amount of sort of muscle wasting away you know, in terms of not being able to to load or even walk on that on that that leg and stuff so we we did have a, a lot of work to to do but i mean with the help of everybody around around us in terms of the physios and the the all, all, all the knowledge and expertise i think we kind of really pulled together as a team and, and set targets f from where we wanted to get to broke it down to small chunks and you know realistic aims at each each phase of the program and that and therefore Fraser could really buy into what was what was going on at every step of the way. You know, they try and make it as interesting as possible, even though you're limited really to what you can do. And, um, you know, I think just kind of within that department, I think they've got the balance of, you've got kind of the jokers as well as the, as the serious people. And that's what you need, you know, you need people around there who are super positive and, um, and who will lift the injured lads. Well, I've always got on well with Fraser anyway before the injury, so that helps. So we can sort of relate to stuff. And he comes in this room when we do. It's the only room in the club apart from the doctor where we can close the door, shut the outside world out, and he can sort of let off a bit of steam if things are going badly, or he can laugh if things are going really well. Just we spend hours and hours together, and you know he's one of those people who can just kind of lift you. I think he senses when when you need that and. Uh, through just stupidity, somehow makes you smile. So um, you know they're important. People like that are so important, and um, I think you can obviously spend so much time with individuals when you're doing your rehab, and everyone can get on top of each other at times. I think somehow Chris then manages to kind of make everyone smile, and um, you know it's been it's been very important for me. I think at times, and, and we just chat about general stuff, not just about his injury or football, it's about what's going on in life. We've got a little music system over there, he's normally DJ. He's got a little thing about uh, Taylor Swift. So if she's free and she wants to date with him, I'm sure he'd be over the moon about that. Because I'm sick to death of listening to Taylor Swift. And Celine Dion, he likes his. So when he was in a bad mood, he'd put on that. So I used to hate it, so I used to switch it off. Yeah, so Chris's room really, so I've so spent a lot of time in here. Uh, normally just one on one with Chris, you know, kind of massage, uh, work on work on the scar, uh, getting that kind of moving, and um, yeah, you know, even now I'm in here, you know, quite a lot. So we often just come in, shut the door, and just chill out and put some tunes on, and you know, we'll we'll put the world to rights, you know, we'll have a we'll have a chat and anything that's on my mind, we'll chat about, or you know, he can he can vent as well. So. Um, no, it's been good. You know, I think me and Chris have really kind of bonded and, you know, we spent a lot of time together, um, you know, over the last kind of nine, ten months and, uh, you know, can't really thank him enough. You know, it's it's been funny. We've had funny times in here and, uh, you know, sometimes you just end up trashing his room, really. <laughs> I was going to say, he's made some pretty strong comments, both on one, that trash in the room. I think there is the odd, uh, the odd mark on the ceiling, but also your musical taste as well. Is there any... Any counter, <laughs> counter arguments you'd like to it's provide hard against that? Well, like Graham's got like terrible music, and then when he's coming here, Chris is obsessed with putting uh, Taylor Swift and Celine Dion on. Oh, that's, that's so amazing. like it's not ideal, really, but I don't hold it against them. So um, you know, Chris just loves it. You know, he loves he lo does love Celine Dion, and uh, you know, it's just just part of the package, really. When you come in, you got, you have to deal with his music. So he he was probably in about month three three or so. I mean, we, we we started with with off off feet offloaded conditioning work just to try and keep keep him stimulated, keep him engaged in the process. But um, really, after about sort of f I'd say th four months, we really started the lower body strengthening to to put the, the the muscle mass and the support structures back in and around that that knee. Tell me a little bit about Bill because he's one of those kind of unsung heroes, I think, in the. Uh in the dressing room, not, not a lot of fans will know about him or know his name, but tell me about what it is that you know you enjoy particularly about working with him. Um, he's just so good at his job. I think um, you know he's obviously a sports scientist, and you know I've, I've worked with him the whole time as at Celtic, and then he came, he joined us kind of uh, Christmas time, I think, wasn't it last last season? And yeah, it's fantastic. You know, the lads absolutely love him. He's you know brilliant at his job. He's he's funny. He's a good lad. Um, and you know, if, even from the first time I walked through the door at Celtic, you know, I think we just kind of clicked, kind of our personalities, and um, you know, he's brilliant to have around the place. I think everyone speaks so highly of him, and um, 
you know, for me, having him here has really kind of helped me as well because, you know, coming back through the injury, we've obviously spent, uh, you know, hours and hours in the gym together and, and working on stuff. So, um, you know, I was very fortunate to have someone of that kind of that quality. What's the dialogue been like with, with the first team management staff, I guess, mostly through Dave? Yeah, I mean, they've been really, really understanding and very, very positive in terms of uh, n not really putting, you know, significant time pressures on us. You know, that they, they want to see Fraser back to his best. They want him in, in back at the level that, that he was previously, but uh, particularly the way Dave and ourselves have been able to interact in these final, final few, um, few months, you know, really from since o late October, Fraser was training with Dave, but under kind of strict guidelines and, and Dave's been fantastic in terms of constant review, feedback, dialogue, and then moving on to, to, to con continually ensure that Fraser was developing under him and, and, and back, back to the level that, 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 he, that, he, that he was prior to the injury. For me to just start in terms of working with him again in an afternoon and getting him out on the grass, just him and I, and obviously a lot of people watching and filming and you know starting from very very basic practices just to see that and get our interaction again and and let him feel as though he's got some value again what a long slow process but something i was really looking forward to and i knew that when we actually got to that day that really he'd climb the mountain and it was just going to be time and time and time and repetition of exercise to get him to the point where he could start playing practice matches or or then into games yeah he's been you know absolutely absolutely crucial you know he's been fantastic kind of every step of the way um you know i think he's really kind of understood the injury and um you know he can never do enough for you i think um even early on he just kind of keeps you going you know chats to you if you want any problems you can just chat to him and he'll try and help you through them and um and then obviously once he can get out on the pitch you know we've spent you know, it's another person that you've spent hours and hours with. You know, he's stayed behind in the afternoon just to work with me and um, put sessions on for me. And you know, we've done Saturday morning sessions before he's had to go to the stadium and do the game. And you know, he's been absolutely vital. I think you know his kind of relationship with the physios and with Bill. Um, you know, I think they've all kind of come together and really linked together and uh, come up with a really good kind of plan of me going back into training and what I can do and then returning to full training. So. I mean the basic functions had all stopped but you know repetition of exercise suddenly it's like riding a bike and it's all starts coming back very very quickly but that's then when you've got to kind of put the brakes on and be careful and not overdo it you know just stick to your plans stick to your programs building and building and building and then hopefully we, we can continue that now and uh, he can have a successful end to the season. When news came of our first game at under 21 level, um, he seemed a little bit nervous, a little bit on edge in the morning. Uh, I think we understand that. Some of his demons were perhaps playing out a little bit, but really and truly, we, we just reminded him and brought him back to how good the preparation for this moment had been. You know, No shortcuts were taken at any point in time. Uh, Honestly, would we have been happy in playing a few weeks earlier? Yeah, because we genuinely thought the preparation had been that good. But what was really important was that he was comfortable in his own mind that he was ready. Uh, and, that, and that time was right. I think the key one for me was the 21s. I mean, you loaded to it in your interview with Fraser. We all turned up to watch Fraser's first game with the 21s. And I think, again, that shows the strength that you talked about with the, the sports medicine and science team how close we've become with Fraser, that we all stayed and wanted to support him. Game in a long, long time. How are you feeling after it? Yeah, good. Uh, obviously, good to good to get the win. Uh, makes it uh, makes it better. So, uh, you know, obviously a bit rusty, but um, you know, it was perfect. Uh, buzzing to get you know 90 minutes under my belt in you know probably nine and a half months now. So, uh, 
Yeah, just delighted, um, just to kind of get through it and, you know, the, the victory makes it that much better. The, the overriding emotion was just, you know, so pleased for him to, you know, because we knew how much it would mean to him to be to be back out there, but also for us, for us guys as a team, you know, to be able to stand up there and, and, and watch it together in, in terms of all the people that have put a lot of work into him. Uh, it, it, you know, the, the result itself, you know, didn't, didn't, didn't have an overriding feeling for us guys. It was more the fact that he was, he was back out there doing what he, what he wanted to do and what he's worked so hard to do over the, the last few months. So, no, it was, it, it was, it was, it was, you know, a, a, a special moment in terms of, the, you know, uh, the, um, it was it was that light at the end of the tunnel moment realised really. Yeah. Seems no time since we started back in full training. You know I think um, so. Obviously getting back in full training, you're just buzzing, and then uh, you know we obviously train for a bit, and then as you say, the under 21s game kind of came along, and and then I was obviously planning to play a few more under 21s games, but you know that's football. I think it's just you know Steve the physio said that he thought, you know, this this bit of the rehab would end up being kind of rushed. And, uh, you know, it happened as well. But as soon as he'd cleared one under-21 game, you know, you know he's fit and ready. Um, and obviously, you know, we, we, we put him in because of what I said. You know, he's, he's a great goalkeeper. He's in mentally a real strong position and it was a big week for the team. Two home games that, that in my opinion, were must win home games. Seeing how Fraser turned from when he knew that kind of he was going to be involved, mm. you saw his stature just change and you thought, well, God, this guy's, he's switched on to, I'm, I'm ready to play, I'm professional, this is my rehab zone now, I'm, I'm a Southampton Football Club first team goalkeeper, I'm going. And his stature and his and mannerisms changed. If people at the top in and around him in terms of the manager and, and Dave hadn't hadn't seen enough in training or in that, that game to suggest that he was ready then they wouldn't they wouldn't put him into a situation such as or such as the two he's overcome last week. But um, from from a medical science science point of view we, we, we were confident in terms of he we, we we knew that physically he was ready for that, you know, and it was just a, a matter of, you know, Fraser dipping his toe in and, and you know really just going for it, you know. On the Wednesday, yeah, I was, I was fine, to be honest. I think it was kind of the Tuesday, I was a bit like, I wasn't sure if I was going to play or not. And then um, once once I kind of got to the stadium, I, I felt like I'd never, never been away, to be honest. Um, so it was, it sounds strange, but it felt like, you know, I'd, I'd been there all season. And um, yeah, I was pretty chilled, really, I think. You know, we obviously get there for pre-match and then you've got a bit of time sitting around, but, um, you know, I think with the work that we've done and, uh, you know, I was kind of confident going into it and I didn't really have any doubts. I think, you know, for me, I knew there was no kind of pressure on me. It was just a case of going out and enjoying it, really. And, um, you know, I felt a kind of real kind of weight off my shoulders and just able to go out and play with freedom. And, uh, you know, for me, I think, just to walk off the pitch at the end and know that physically I was fine. Um, yeah, it was a, a real kind of lift for me. And Um, I think for me, just for him to come through the games is a massive plus. I think he gave the team a big boost by, you know, being out there. Um, obviously knowing what he is capable of and what he'd done for the team previously, I just think it gave everybody a huge lift. 
Um, I think the crowd responded to him, the team responded to him, and in the end, you know, what I would say is that the team defended fantastically well in front of him for the two games, and as a goalkeeper, sometimes being able to walk off and have had little to do is sometimes something that you've got to take on board and enjoy them games because there's other games when you're overworked and we're analysing this, that and the other. The games when you have little to do is sometimes better because your concentration's got to be better. But for me, just for him to come through the games uh, was a real positive. But the team winning the two games, coupled with him coming back, has been a real fantastic week for us. It was a little bit emotional, to be honest. I think it's one of them where you work so hard to get to that point and... I think that was just kind of the icing on the cake. I think even from the build-up, I think you look at the physios and you know they've seen me like on my worst days where uh, you know you're struggling to get around the building and you know you've spent so many hours with people and with that one kind of goal of getting you back out on the pitch together and uh, and doing the thing that I love and uh, you know I think for kind of a lot of people it was. It was a kind of emotional, emotional day just to kind of see me back out there, and um, you know, as you say, the fans were absolutely amazing, and uh, you know, was, I couldn't have asked for anything more. You know, it was more than I ever expected I'd get off the fans, and um, you know, I really can't thank them enough. You're going to give them a wave anytime soon? Yeah, we're <laughs> getting a bit of abuse for this on Twitter. Um, yeah, you know, it's one of those things where you know, for me during the game. I'm just concentrating on the game and, you know, I think anyone who knows me knows that I'm a kind of ultimate professional. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'll definitely give them probably a wave before, before the game and after the game. But uh, during the game, it's one of them where I'm concentrating on trying to keep clean sheets. So, um, but, you know, they're absolutely awesome and uh, they've been since I signed for the club and, um, you know, I've absolutely loved my time here. Did you feel a sense of pride then? Obviously, first of all, stepping out of the under-21s a couple of weeks ago, but then second of all, two home games in four days. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, he's worked with the whole department. Did really, not just myself. Um, I've largely coordinated it d during ten months or so. I probably had eight weeks where I worked with him quite intensely. But I can't emphasise enough how much of a team effort it is. Um, Tom Sturdy's done some fantastic work with him, especially in the first couple of months or so. And as we fine-tune him towards the end, um, got some unbelievable sports scientists that we work alongside. Um, Bill Stars that we got from Celtic last year has been a revelation in this end point. Uh, and a lot of, I think a lot of credit has to go to Dave as well, you know, uh, Dave Watson, which has really helped us fine-tune this end stage. We probably have a lot more experience getting outfield players back than goalkeepers. It's such a unique position in its own right. We've, we've all had an education on, on goalkeeping, really. I think that the, the injury changes your thought process on life in general because you, 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 you suddenly all this front and the image of being a footballer is taken away from you and you become very, very vulnerable. I think um, it's made him more aware of everything in life. Um, but as a man, he's a, great, he's a great man, a great character, great personality, um, but he's a very humble, shy, shy kind of character um, and you really do have to get to know him to then, you know, for him to get the best from you and me to get the best from him. I mean, I've obviously had constant dialogue with the England medics and the staff regarding Fraser's rehab and, you know, coming back fit dates and scenarios. So they're already aware of where he's at. And obviously they know he's played the last two games and to play two games on a Wednesday and a Saturday just shows that he's fit, ready and in a good position. If the national team calls that he'll be ready. But the most important thing for him now is to stay fit and well and stay in the team until the end of the season and then look at bigger pitches beyond that. You know, for me, I just want to get back playing, you know, to the level I know I can play. Um, just want to kind of, I think once you've had long-term injury, you kind of, when you come back, you do come back with a lot more kind of, I don't know, like a weight off your shoulders in a way. I think I just want to go out and enjoy my football and obviously for me, I'm going to be aiming to go to the Euros in the summer. Uh, you know, that's got to be my aim and it's just a case for me as playing as well as I can for Southampton and, and trying to make that happen in the summer and, and uh, go from there. You know, I think last week was, was a big week, I think, kind of, you know, we got two really important results and uh, strong results and then, you know, obviously Charlie signing on Saturday, you know, obviously the lads heard about that kind of before the game and, you know, it gave us a real lift, I think, you know, he's a, he's a fantastic addition to the squad and to 
you know, be signing players like that can only mean that you're trying to move forward as a club and uh, you know, that's I think that's what it's all about. I think, you know, when you look at the quality we brought in last summer as well, um, it's all about just trying to trying to improve ourselves and better ourselves and you know, we had a fantastic season last year and I think it's been a tough first half of the season this year. But um there's no reason why we can't, you know, really kick on. You know, we've we've got a fantastic group of players and um you know, there's no reason why we can't have a real strong second half of the season. You know, I've been fortunate to be at a club where you know we've got great physios and great medical staff. So uh, obviously, putting a lot of time in the treatment room and in the gym. And uh, you know, I'll be so grateful to everyone who's helped me.